Hi, this is Hannah and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a basic A2 card. This particular video series is strictly for beginners. I am in a lot of online card making groups and one of the things I've noticed recently is that a lot of people are getting into card making. I, I think that they're getting cards from their friends who make cards and they're thinking, oh, you know, I'd like to do this and make a special card for my friends and families. And that's great because it's a great hobby. It's a lot of fun. But I have to tell you at the outset, it's also an extremely expensive hobby. Um, everything, and I mean everything connected with card making costs money. When I first started, I did a lot of impulse buying and I have things in, in my studio right now that I haven't even touched and I've had them for years and years and years. And I want to help other people avoid making those mistakes. What I want to do in this series is help you learn how to do a basic A2 card and then we'll do some other things without you feeling like you have to go out and buy a lot of stuff. The, the first cards I ever made, and they were quite beautiful, I made those cards using wallpaper sample books. And the wallpaper stores, when those sample books are discontinued, they throw them away. So if you go to um, one of the paint stores and, and you ask them if you can have their discontinued wallpaper books, they'll give them to you. And I still have some here in my studio that I use for backgrounds and, and things. So you have to look around for, uh, for ways to make this hobby affordable. And, you, and there are some, some ways to do it. The card, I'm going to use one stamp today. This, uh, this stamp, this image is the one that I'm going to be in the center of the card. Uh, so just figure out what you want to use and use that, okay? Um, colored pencils, if you don't have colored pencils, you can use crayon if you have crayon because it depends on your image. My, the image that I'm using, there's just a small little section to be colored in here. So I'm going to use colored pencils on one and I think I'm going to use Copic markers on the other. That's my plan. Um, I don't know how the plan is going to go. And that's one of the fun things about this particular hobby is because you can have a great idea in your mind and then when you get to the end of actually doing it, it, um, it goes away and you do something totally different. You're going to need a bone folder or um, if you don't have a bone folder, that's okay. You can um, <laughs> actually kind of use your fingers to crease your card, but it's better if you have the bone folder to do that. I don't know if a credit card will work. We'll try. I've never tried that because I've always had bone folders, but we'll see when we get into it. If you have clips that you can use to hold elements on your card so that you can check your positioning and make sure that things are positioning. So you just need something to hold it. Um, if you sew, you might have those little um, clips that I have some that you use to, to hold the fabric down. You can use those. Let's see. Yeah, they look like this. these little clips and they're tiny and they don't get in your way. The reason I use the pin curl clips is because they, if I'm trying to, if I have a flower on my card and I want to hold it, these have a longer um, foot and so they can reach over and this just will grab just a little edge. But if you're just holding something on the edge of your card, these little clips will work as well. Um, and there, this is another style of clip if you're trying to hold something on all the way on the big edge of your card. These are, are great. I love these. I had two and I broke one and I haven't been able to find them since. So I 
keep this one away in, in, in a safe place. So just find something that you can use to, to clip your card. Um, you're going to need um, ink. Now, I have to tell you up front that I am an Amazon associate. So a lot of the products that I'm going to list down below, that the products that I'm using in this video, the link will be to Amazon. And I am supposed to inform you that if you click on those links, I get credit for it. Um, and I think even if you don't buy, if you just click, they, they give you credit for so many clicks or whatever. But any of the links, if you go in, that's where it's going to take you. Now, for items that are not sold on Amazon, I will also put links down there to those companies. I don't get any compensation for that, but just if you feel like you want to buy that particular item, I want you to find it. You can... Uh, shop the prices. That's entirely up to you. But I'm just showing you the things that I've used over the years that have been successful for me. But whatever you can find that works for you, go for it. I'm using Memento Black Ink. This is my favorite black ink. This is their Tuxedo Black. It is my go-to. Um, I, I don't stamp with anything other than the tuxedo black when I am um, doing my stamping. So, thank you, honey. So, um, I'll have a link to this at the down in the bottom. Okay. You're going to need a trimmer. This is Fiskars. I think every, just about everybody uses Fiskars. They have different kinds. They have one like this that there's it's six inches and then it has a part that flips out that looks just like this. Uh, this one just has a swing arm and so it can take you all the way out to 15 inches. Um, you, I've rarely, I've never used it. You know, uh, 12 by 12 is the most, um, I've ever used on on here. I have other trimmers. I have other guillotine print uh, trimmers that I use for for cutting super thick paper. But for basic card making, this will serve you just fine. Okay, glue runners. Okay, so you're going to need two types of glue for basic card making. For our project, I think you can get away with just a glue runner but um, you might need wet glue, so I'll show you that as well. This is the Zyron Mega Runner, and this is my favorite runner. This is my go-to runner. I use it all the time. It, it has a um, cover, and that's one of the things I really like about it because then it protects your tape runner and it doesn't stick to everything. And I have another one that I love. This is the glue, uh, what is it, glue arts. Yeah. Glue arts glue glide pro. Um, this is one of their blank cartridge, uh, covers. Let me see if I can reach. Ah. <laughs> I had to reach to my other work table. This is the, the branded one. Um, and I love it because you get a push pull function on here. So you push going one direction and you pull going the other direction. So I like that, um, to be able to use that, but without the, without it having a cover, your runner does this. And then you can see how that's come off the spool. And then it's really, you have to push this little thing and manipulate it to try to get it to tighten up. And I almost always see going the wrong direction. I end up making this situation worse. So um, that's why I recommend the Zyron Mega Runner. And I'll put a link down below for that. Okay. Um, 
You can also get, I'm sorry, I dropped it on the floor, these little small uh, glue runners. This is my go-to. This is the AdTech Crafters Tape. And you could get five of these in a box for like seven bucks or something. The last time I tried to get them on Amazon, they weren't available and Amazon said they didn't know if they were going to get any more of these. So um, I'm looking around for a comparable one. Tombow has one, but it's too expensive for me. I won't pay that for a little bit of glue runner. So I'll just have to keep searching until I find one that's in my pri price range, what I'm willing to spend. And you'll need glue. This is Books by Hand, uh, pH neutral PVA glue. It is a white glue. It dries clear. It dries flexible. So if you use this on a card, because uh, uh, how do I explain this? Sometimes when you glue things down with, with other glue, when it dries, it dries hard. So if there are any lumps or bumps or if you bend your card it's going to crease and you get warping in your paper this glue will not warp your paper it's it is it was developed to to bind books so you press all of your signatures the pages that make up a book are called signatures because they're put in in sections and then they're glued across the back and the spine is put down so when you do that, you don't want that buckling. You don't want that warping because if it's not fitting flush against your binding, then your book's going to come apart. So when I got into book binding, I discovered this glue and I've never looked back. Uh, I could, if I could pan around this camera over on the other side of my table, you would see that I have all kinds of glues from every person I think that's ever made glue. And the only two that I really say work for me consistently is this glue and Elmer's school glue, which I use on a lot of projects. But Elmer's will do that warping too. So I pretty much uh, limited myself to this glue and I've gotten a good result with it. Okay, so we're going to do some stamping. And if you don't have a stamp press, and I'm thinking if you're a beginner, you you probably don't this is the tim holtz um stamp press which you can't get anymore amazon had a sale after the lawsuit i think they were trying they said well we just need to to get rid of them and so they had them on sale and i have the large one this is the travel size i have the large one and i have the small one and i got they had the large ones two for like what you would normally pay for one almost. So I got two large ones and this small one. Um, there are other stamp press that you can get. I would recommend that if you decide to get a stamp press, and I think you should as a beginning card maker, because this will help you stamp correctly on your cards. If it costs more than 20 or $30, even 30 is a lot, but if it costs more than that, don't buy it because there are comparable um, stamp press out there. There's no reason on this earth to pay 65, 70 bucks, even 50 bucks for a stamp press. It's, it's just a money grab. I don't have one of those expensive stamp press. I refuse to buy one. I just said I'll do without. What I did do before all the, you know, controversy, I purchased this. This was made by We Are Memory Stampers. This was their stamp press. Um, they can't sell them anymore. But there are, um, like I said, on Amazon, there is a comparable stamp press to the Tim Holtz machine and I'll put a link down below and you can link on that and you can go and look at it it will work for you it will serve your purpose if you've already done a little stamping you might have uh, stamp blocks and I stamped 
with these for years. We all did for certain um, stamping sentiments. I will use this one sometimes to to stamp a sentiment. I don't use it very much because it's just so easy to use the stamp press. But I would recommend that you have um, a set of stamp blocks on hand because sometimes you will do like specialty stamping and this will be very helpful to you in that. There we go. Um, the other thing that you might want to have on hand um, are some, oh yeah, some embellishments. But like I said, we'll do the card and you can decide what you want to use on your card. We're going to use flowers and possibly these little dragonflies. It just depends on where the design takes me. Sometimes I think I'm going to do things a certain way. And like I said, then when I get started with the project, I find that something else looks better. But I think that's what we're going to use. So if you don't have any embellishments, that's fine. Because as we're doing this project, I'm going to tell you some things that will be equally as efficient um, and will work well on your card. I'm going to use some washi tape and I got these guys um, I got them at the Dollar Tree um, they were I was just passing by and I saw them hanging up there and I was like oh I didn't know they had washi tape at the Dollar Tree and they're like were five or six of them in a little package for a dollar and so I just picked it up and I like it now because most of my washi is, is wider than this. Even the washi that I get with my planner subscription. Um, they send a certain size each month. Um, I get like five or six rolls of washi. But they never send these super thin ones. You can buy them and I don't want to buy them. I'm already buying the kit. Um, so I've just found them on Amazon and at Dollar Tree and Big Lots. They sell them so you can go there. And you can find a lot of stuff at Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is a great resource for crafting. Um, and through this series, I will probably show you some Dollar Tree items. Okay, you will need some white cardstock. This is Nina. 110 pound paper um, and that's what I'm going to be using it's it's a heavy card stock um, and because you want your cards to be able to stand up <laughs> and two you don't want to send a card that's flimsy sometimes when you pick up a card in the uh, grocery store you're looking for a birthday card and the paper is real thin it's like a 60 or 80 pound paper this is is a, a heavier weight paper and it'll hold up better to stamping and gluing and the things you know the abuses that we as paper crafters heap on the paper nina is the brand that i use there is a company called paper tray they make great paper but again i just can't give them the kind of money they want for 25 sheets of paper when i can get 300 sheets of Nina paper for the same price. I just can't do it. So, but you will need whatever cardstock you have. Um, we're using white for the first project, and then I'll show you some other options. Probably need two sheets of this um, in case you want to do both cards. And let's see, did I get everything that we're going to need? I think so. You're going to take your full sheet full size sheet of Nina or whatever white card stock you have put it onto your trimmer <clears throat> and we're going to cut it at four and a quarter inches okay and I've obviously already cut mine so I'm not going to cut it again and you leave it the um <clears throat> the the you don't have to do any other cutting because the standard basic card that most people use is an A2 size and the A2 size is a uh, four and a quarter <clears throat> by five and a half so if you take obviously an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and cut it in half it would be four and a quarter <clears throat> and your 
um, five and a half when you fold it in half that's what you'll get so <clears throat> normally I would do this on my scoreboard but I'm going to oh, flip this over because I've got so I'm going to just eyeball it here and you can do that you just want to make sure that you get your edges <clears throat> lined up and make sure that that they're um, in alignment and then use your bone folder to um, <clears throat> burnish your edge um, when I'm doing work for clients I usually will score this but you can burnish it and when I the reason I say you want to use a uh, good weight of uh, paper is because you do want your card <clears throat> to to stand up make a tent and stand up on its own because you're going to be putting another layer of cardstock on here and you want a firm base so once you've done that you can put this aside that is going to be your card base um <clears throat> and i oh, thought that i had a another piece of card but i didn't so i'm going to just cut another um <clears throat> sheet and then because i'm going to use this as my top layer what I'm going to do right now I'm going to go ahead and cut it at the five and a half even though I know that I'm going to have to cut it down but because I intend to stamp on this panel <clears throat> I want to give myself some oops room in case I make a mistake so we are going to, the card we're going to do right now is going to be white on white. It's just going to be a basic card because I want to show you how simple and easy it is to make a really nice basic card without any equipment, when, without um, a whole lot of fancy supplies. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to stamp on this panel. I'm going to, I've already um aligned my stamp one of the other things i didn't show you that you might want to keep in your <coughs> studio are baby wipes you can get the get baby wipes i think they still sell them at the dollar store <clears throat> they used to i used to get them and i just buy you know, like 10 or 20 dollars worth but now i order them from um, amazon and i get them by the case because we use them in the bathrooms in the house and so um i just have a subscription they send them every two months um, because <clears throat> we use them a lot but i um, did order one case just for my studio these are lifesavers so you need to um get keep baby wipes and paper towels in my trusty roll of paper paper towels right here and you need to keep water in your in your craft space in a spray bottle like this and I just use this to I keep my alcohol my Windex and stuff in little spray bottles like this and then when you need to wipe something down <clears throat> it's just very handy to do that that's okay so I need to clean off my stamp and my um, the base of my stamper and I'm just going to use the baby wipe to do that and I normally clean my stamps after using them now I'm not going to do it tonight because we're doing a basic card normally I would stamp this with black ink and then I would clean my stamp and apply embossing ink over it and embossing powder clear embossing powder and that gives it a raised look and feel and it makes your black ink darker but since this is a basic card and I think if I get into embossing and all of that 
then it's not basic anymore and it requires you to have a heat gun and things that you might not have. <clears throat> so um, this probably won't be as dark as I want it. But the great thing about the, the stamp press, and you do need to press on here to make sure that you are getting a good even impression, is that you don't lose the positioning of your stamp. And so even though this did give me a nice crisp stamp, um, I want it a little bit darker. <clears throat> so I'm just going to ink this up one more time. And I'm going to stamp it again. <clears throat> okay. There we go. So that makes it a little darker. And I'm leaving my stamp on here because I will stamp this, I think, one more time to do a different <clears throat> type of card. All right. So let me put this side. Now we have really, we are pretty much done with our basic card because you have your card base, right? And you have your second layer. Now, right now, <clears throat> these two layers are the exact same size. What we want is this to be at least an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around. And in order to do that, <clears throat> I could have, what I would have done normally um, is that I would have cut this down to the size that I needed and then stamped, but I wanted to um, go through this for you. So to get my card down to the size that I want, <clears throat> this was four and a quarter. So I want it to go down to four. So I will move my car to four and one eighth and take an eighth of an inch off on this side. And then I'll <clears throat> turn it around and I'll bring it down to four. and take an eighth of an inch off on that side and that <clears throat> will give me the side that I want. Then for the five that was five and a half, we want to get it down to five and a quarter. So you do the same thing. You just move it, put it on the five and a half. I, I know some, some people, the math thing trips them up. So if you put it at five and a half and then just slide it down one eighth, which is the next like little long line <clears throat> or halfway in between half and a quarter and take off <clears throat> an eighth there and then bring it down to five and a quarter and take off another eighth. So that will give you <clears throat> an eighth of an inch all the way around and so you will end up <clears throat> with something that looks like this. Okay. So, um, and because it's white on white, obviously right now it's hard to see, but we're going to look at some, look at how you can jazz this up, but you can also do white on white and it doesn't really need any jazzing up. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, you know, I told you about using the sand eraser. I'm what I'm erasing here for some odd reason, my fingernail polish, I guess, because I did not do a top coat has decided it wants to get on everything. All right. <clears throat> so the next step is to color this image. And these are just little flowers. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here. I'm using a new program and so far, okay, that's not the way I want it to go. I want it to zoom. Let's see. Okay, not letting me zoom. Okay. Ah, yes, look at that success. 
Okay, so um, now all I'm going to color is just this little section. And um, I'm going to use my little pencils here. Now, I'm, I'm, now you will see as you become more familiar with this hobby, you are going to see some ladies who do some magnificent coloring. And if you're one of those people that you're one of those kids that could always color in the coloring book and it was beautiful and teachers complimented on it, that's amazing. You're going to have the most fun. I'm one of those kids that the first time I colored something, my mom broke all my crayons, so I can't color. <clears throat> but fortunately, doing this, you do not have to be an artist. I'm going to take off these bracelets because they're banding on this glass mat. I love my Tim Holtz glass mat, but it, it makes a lot of noise when you put things down on it. So I'm just doing like little basic stuff here and being kind of blind. Um, yeah, so I'm just taking these and like these little leaves, I'm just putting a little bit of green on there. <clears throat> I need to sharpen this one up because it's not giving me a point. Okay. Um, and so I'm just going to go through and color these up. And I just want to show you that you can get a good result with a simple, um, like I said, even if you have some crayons, as long as they have a kind of a good point on them, that's not going to give you a lot of blurred stuff. You can use those. Um, now our white on white card has taken on some color and it looks a lot better, but I think it needs still something more. So I'm going to add here um, a little strip of washi tape. So um, I have put this down and pulled it up a couple of times um, on something else. And so I'm trying to reuse it. So you just have to make sure that it's straight. Now, if you, you may not have washi tape, um, if you're a beginner, that's okay. You can take a marker, like just a regular Sharpie marker. And if make a straight line, um, black, a bold black line across there. One of the things that you you need to buy is a ruler. And the T ruler is the best one to have in your studio. And you can get these on Amazon and you get two in a package, I think for like five bucks. But like I said, the link will be down below. So if you don't have like washi tape or some other small ribbon you can put across there, just use a uh, regular Sharpie because it makes a bold black line and you can make a line across the bottom of your card and you will get the same result. Now, of course, this has a little gold in it, uh, but, you know, it's um, foiled. But you will uh, have just as nice a result if you, if you do the black line. Or you can do ribbon. You can tie a piece of ribbon across here and just make a bow right in the front of your card. It, it's all up to you. Okay, so I got this. I think that it's fairly straight here. Um, now, here's where my clips come in because I'm, I need to back look at this bow to make sure that I'm comfortable with, uh, look at this washi tape line to make sure that I'm comfortable with it, to make sure that I don't want maybe to cut my uh, panel a little smaller. I just, before I glue anything down or stick anything else on here, I want to get my bearings on this setup. So, 
This is the process I go through. You don't have to do this if you're confident that everything is hunky-dory, then you can just go with it. But I have to do this. It's become a habit with me. Okay, so I like that. I like the way that looks. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to stand it up at an angle so you can see. It's not really working. But um, I am comfortable with that layout. And I think my line is fairly straight. So um, that's another thing. <clears throat> when you put things down on a card and once you're something like a washi tape, you want to burnish it to make sure that it adheres to your project and that it won't come loose. And before I, uh, before I put this panel down, I will trim the, um, I'll trim the washi. Okay. So let me back off just a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> So now we have to decide what else do we want to do on this card. And I think it could use a flower. And I want to use this flower and I want to put it right here. So I go and I get another trusty dusty pin curl clip. And I'm going to clip it on there. And you have to do it just right because, see, I can't stand my card up from the side. So, um, the other tool that we crafters have that we use a lot is a, um, a florist frog. I've moved mine. I need to grab it. But I'm going to kind of look at this um, and see if I really want this flower right here and I do I like the flower there so I'm going to put a flower there I need to put a few others there first to see which one I like the best I like this one and the reason I like this one is because this blue one pulls in the, the blue that I used here on those little flowers. And the rust colored one pulls in the color from those flowers. And I think the rust colored one looks the best. I'm going to try one more. And I don't like this one because um, it's too pale. It doesn't have enough color. I thought I had another flower, but I guess I don't. Um, so this is the flower that I think I want to use. But before I put the flower there, there's one more embellishment that I want to put there to make sure that I want to go with flower and not with um, a different type of embellishment. So I have this cute little dragonfly and while I like him, when you look at this card, it's not, if I use the dragonfly, the card is not properly weighted. It's, it's top heavy. Um, this type of card where you have minimal uh, coverage and information on it, we could leave it just like this and it would be a true clean and simple card, what we refer to as CAS design. And in that clean and simple, you you don't um you don't do anything more to the card that's it but we're going to add our flower to this card so that's the one that we're going to go with right there so i will pin that one there just to take one last look make sure it's centered and make sure I'm pleased with how this looks. And I am. I'm very pleased with it. So there we have our card. Now to get everything glued down. 
the first thing I'm going to do is to remove my clips. And remember I had that little piece of um, washi hanging off the edge. So I'm going to just clip that. And I am going to, um, I was going to use craft foam to lift this off the card, but I, um, I think I'm just going to use just regular um, foam squares. And we call these dimensioning squares. So I think that I will use those. I have some in my drawer here. And um, I, I actually got these at um, Dollar Tree. Not Dollar Tree. Yeah, Dollar Tree. I did. I got these at Dollar Tree. And these are, are big. They're bigger than the usual foam squares. Uh, sometimes I'll cut them in half and I think that's what I will do for this um, I have to get my glue scissors I have a, a pair of scissors that I use just to cut sticky stuff when I'm working so I'm gonna cut this and we put one here and I'm putting them like maybe a quarter of an inch down from my edges on both sides. Oops, that one's not quite down far enough. These foam squares that I got from um, Dollar Tree have an extremely aggressive hole, so you have to be really careful to get them down where you want them. For the one in the middle, I'm going to leave it the normal size. And then I'm going to cut this one in half <clears throat> and put it down as I did the others, just eyeballing what I think is a quarter of an inch. Then I'm just putting it in because you don't want it to really show when your card is down. Okay, so that's there. Um, and now I'm going to put my flower down and to put my flower down I'm just going to put a little bit of the um, glue on the back that's too much glue you only need a dot as I, I when I cut my um, slit and I in my spout I did it made it too big Cut down too far so I have this gigantic hole now and have to be very careful the good thing about the um, books by hand glue is that it doesn't clog it won't get clogged up on the uh, in the spout so you don't have to worry about having a straight a safety pin or any other kind of pin to put on it okay so now that that's down I'm going to um, just peel away the release paper on these get that up okay and now for the fun part is getting this down and, and positioning it what i like to do um, when i'm doing this to give myself a little oops room I will put just a little dollop of glue on my, um, even when I use double-sided tape, I do this. And what that does is it gives me time to move this around in case I don't get it positioned exactly like I want it on the first try. So, uh, yeah, that's a little off there, a little bit. Just move it over just a smidgen. 
Okay, well, it looks like my stamp might be a little bit crooked, but there you go. So there's your card. Very simple card. Okay, now I want to show you from this basic card here some other variations on it with this same stamp. And then these, um, I haven't glued anything down yet. But in this one, and I put the flower in a different place, and I put this um, sort of aqua uh, cardstock as a second layer. So this, um, you know, this is another way you could use that stamp. And I use the uh, washi tape on this one too. And when this video posts on my blog, um, all of the finished cards will be on the blog with this one stamp. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know that this was a long video, but I was trying to pack a lot of information into just one video on how to use one stamp to make three different cards. Uh, I think, I hope you've learned something. If you have questions, you can leave your questions on my blog. I'll leave the link to my blog down below. I'll also leave the link to a place to start. And we have a lot of videos there. We have a thousand and one techniques that you can look at um, different techniques that you can use in card making. We answer a lot of questions about machines and tools. So I hope you'll stop by, take a look at that, and um, I hope you come back for the second in this series, Just a Basic A2 Card. Thank you so much. Bye.